All right, this is a question we kind of ask everybody that we have, every guest that we have on the show. And the uh, question is, like, when you got to the league, who's the first person to, like, bust your ass? <laughs> like, this le- this the level. Like, this yeah. is the highest level to go. Uh, Man, my first game was uh, against uh, Melo, you know, and AI. But I had to guard Melo. And he was, what, I was... 18, 19, he was this, probably what, 24? This Denver. 23? Yeah. And you know, yeah, and I never played that Denver altitude I didn't really know too much about. And Melo was just physical, you know. He just, he'd duck you in in the paint, hit you with the shoulder, and then he'll take you out, jab, jab, pull over top of you. So you can't, you wanna be physical, but you don't. Like, he just had you thinking too much on D. And he, and I was just, I went, we had a back to back that night. I just, I got on the plane confused. <laughs> <laughs> never stop, never stop. I want to talk to you about like, like growing up. You know what I'm saying in the in the in the Maryland D.C. that whole D.M.V. area with the like I know like you know high school and, and ball growing up it was at a high level out there. Yeah, y'all had a, sure. y'all had a lot of dudes. You know what I'm saying like talk about some of the. Some of the dudes you grew up playing with that was yeah. like some of them dudes that was boys. I know Bees is a dude yeah, yeah. that you, you know what I'm saying, grew up playing. I played with him my one year in Miami, so I know like he's yeah, a sure. walking bucket. So for like sure. just like y'all got a y'all got a one of the cities and one of the areas just like, you know, well respected yeah, as far yeah. as like the, the the people y'all done put out. Just talk about some of the people you grew up playing against. Yeah, I mean, it may go back far, you know, to like watching guys like I came up watching like Keith Bogans and, and <laughs> Bogues, uh, uh, jo- yeah, Joseph Forte, and um, then Steve Francis, and then Demar Johnson. All those dudes mm-hmm. you kind of like grew up watching, and they making a McDonald's game and making it to the league, and and then you playing against some, you know, you see, you know, and when you playing uh, uh, rec ball, and you see one or two dudes that's just as good as you, mm-hmm. and that one, that one dude for me was Mike Beasley. You know, that, how, how crazy was that? And then as I got older in eighth grade. Ty Lawson, I seen him for the first time, and that was just like another experience. See somebody that fast and that good at basketball yeah. at that age, cause like we so sheltered. So, like then you were saying, so many dudes just go to you know nice high schools and then head, head to college, and I'm like, man, I didn't realize how much talent we had in that area until I got older, and that just molded me into who I was, cause every night we was playing in high school was against dudes that were either going to D1 schools or like you know, young dudes coming up, so it was it was good competition. Yeah, I mean, that's when the internet was really just, you know, popping off really, so we <laughs> was just jumping on all of those sites, and you know, you wanted to see how you stacked up against the players in your neighborhood, and, and you know, hopefully once you got out and got some exposure in the country, so you was hearing about so many players, 6'9", 240, you're right. like, what, is he, what does that even look like? You know, 6'4", <laughs> point guard, 195, I'm like, I've never seen this before, so like, your imagination was just, you know, kind of running wild. And then I was chasing the NBA life, just wanted to see what that was about. And then seeing all the young players coming out of high school and, and playing in the NBA, it was just, it was perfect for me at that time because it was not too much basketball, but it was just enough. You know what I'm saying? It was able, I was able to still go outside and play and still catch up on everything in the NBA. You know yeah. what I mean? It was Dem- cool. Demar Johnson was a he was crazy. In yeah, high school. for real. Like me and him, crazy. like I met him. I met him at ABCD. Me and him played on the same team together, and he didn't even realize he was ranked. Like that's what was crazy. I remember we sitting there one day, we looking at the rankings, and I'm like, "Yo, you know, what's your name? What grade? You know, we going over each other's name." And he like, "Yeah, say his name." I'm looking. I'm going through the thing. I say, "Man." You Bro, you number one. <laughs> like you don't know that. He like, nah, I ain't even know. I'm like, man, that's when that's back when he really yeah, was, he was crossover, crossover, yeah, crossover, long, bang on you, yeah, like throw on you, shoot thing. the three, like everything. Yeah. Like when he, he was, was saying he can come out of no, he could have went straight year. out of high school. Yeah, he was school, telling him to bro. leave after junior year and everything. I remember that. He could have went crazy. straight out of high school. I, I I couldn't believe he went to college. He did one year at Cincinnati, right? Yep. yep. And then we was in the same draft, for all of us. Kenyans, Kenny Satterfield. He's pretty good though. That what? time. They was they was a was a problem. But he should have came out. Oh, Kenyon broke his leg. Yeah, yeah. They was the deal. Yeah, they was tough. Kenyon player. 
of year. Yeah. Like <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. so what like, other players like is the influence you being oh, yeah. like a tall, you know what I'm saying, six, yeah. nine, six, well, seven feet type dude. Yeah. This like, you know what I'm saying, shooting jumpers, handling the ball as well as you do and doing all the things. Like basically being a a, a, a two guard yeah. in a in a in a seven foot, six, eleven, sixteen frame. Yeah. Like who name some of the guys. I mean, I heard you say some of the guys. I heard you mention him before. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that I looked at looked at you as like D Miles 2.0. Like when D Miles hit the scene, it was like, what what's going on? This yeah. is boy six nine out Lanky, here. Running, I, dunking I, I, on bang, everybody. But I'm yeah. talking about I really had the right to left all crossover that, that was the J, moving. Face, all yeah, that, yeah, and it was like banging that thing and like then you came and like you like him with like D Miles with like a I don't know, like Ray Allen or Rashard type three. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The one thing that he was missing was like his jumper okay. and all of that. And you come in, the, yeah. you know, the 50, 90, whatever everybody yeah, say you just type build dude. on with all, all those dudes you watch coming up, man. I just like, I was just, I had an opportunity to, uh, DJ like, man, he ain't have to, but he took me on his wing as I was coming up from like, as a high school kid, just always following him to the gym. Just seeing the lifestyle, seeing stuff that I wanted to be a part of. He was always cool and bringing the youngsters back from our, around our way just to be true. around the life. So he showed us love, and you realize what the OGs really did for mm -hmm. the game, you know. So the stuff that I seen him do, and then before him, just really watching, seeing what you was doing, and it was just like you just want to do that. You just want to keep building and seeing how you can, how far you can take it, because it's just about evolution of the game, you know what I mean? So somebody that's gonna do what I do, that's gonna maybe fine tune it in a different way. So. I was seeing that at an early age. I was like, finally, it's somebody that looked like me. Cause right, I'm the only right. one walking around here long and skinny yeah. and playing in this sport. So I'm like, man, finally somebody that looked like me. And it just make you feel like you can do anything out there. Mm -hmm. So like every day I was watching T-Mac clips. On, I had the tapes, we was running tapes, watching T-Mac film, looking at stats, looking at how he go left, pull up. Like that was somebody I was drawn to and I had to study. So I had to write so much stuff down on him and I was just starting to learn about him and see how he came from high school and how he was six, eight long and athletic like me. So I just kind of shift my focus just to him. And um, and then once you go to one player and you just go to the next and you just go from there. So, but T-Mac and Kobe was the two guys that I always stared at constantly when they played. And, Try to figure out how they did what they did. Yeah, I never could understand when people <coughs> used to say, "Man, Kobe played just like Jordan." Like that was a bad thing. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, well, no, right. That's like, hard what? to look like, like Jordan. Man, what you know? Yeah. If I was, I could rock like Mike. Yeah, shoot the fade, the like style, Mike. how he <laughs> yeah. dunked, the flavor, all the, yeah. the swag, yeah. like. So speaking on when you was coming up and you know the influences, like at what point did you did it did it hit you or did you realize like, man, like. I could make it. I'm 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 nice. Like I yeah. could I could I could play in the NBA one day. Like at what point? Like you know what I'm saying? Was it when you was hooping against somebody, or you you know what I'm saying? Some at, at at a camp, or you yeah, made yeah. yourself known at an AAU tournament? Like what point did you say like, all right, like this way? I'm 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 going to the league. I'm gonna yeah. get there. Um, I, I went to five star camp. It was I was a tenth grader. Nobody really knew my name, but it was like springtime and I was mm -hmm. going into the summer playing in all these camps, like right before All American camp, but I had went to Five Star and I got like the most outstanding player. But I, when I was out there, I went the year before, that was my first time ever at a camp. And then that next year I was going back and I was playing outside and I was just cruising. I was just pulling up from deep. Everybody was coming to watch the games. I'm dunking on people. I'm just like, yo, the game is coming super easy to me. And last year it's like, I was having a hard time just trying to figure it out. So I'm like, I put in so much work and I'm starting to see the results and I'm like, oh shit. And I'm getting taller at the same time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, yo, I really I really can do whatever I want out there. And I start seeing my name in the rankings and I seen on, they had the NBA draft website. Now they had the mock drafts and I see right. my name in the right. mock drafts. I'm <laughs> right. like, yo, I'm still in an apartment. I'm like, I've been watching this shit since I've been 11 years old. So yeah. I'm like, man, this shit getting close. So. And then I just started to put my foot on the gas even more because I want to just see how far I can take my game. And shit, I'm here now. So what made you choose Texas? Man, I was I wanted to go to North Carolina. First really? you couldn't first you couldn't go straight out of high school because yeah. right, we, we know right, straight right, out of high know, school. Right, right. So right. right. Could have definitely Texas, went straight out of high school. <laughs> my coach school. at Texas that recruited me, he was like, Yeah, when they put that rule out, my wife Coach Barnes, his wife, we all toasting up. <laughs> Cause you come to school, I'm like, damn, that's how they really look at this thing. Huh? I didn't know it was that big, but 
I wanted to go to Carolina. All my friends was getting recruited there. Ty Lawson, yeah, who right. I played with for three years. My best friend, we roommates at, we went to Oak Hill together. Roommates at Oak Hill, that was my boy. He went there. And I'm like, so wait, wait, they didn't recruit you? No, 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 no. They was okay. recruiting me heavy with him. They were expecting us to come together. Okay. I'm going on official visits. I went to a game when they beat Duke at the buzzer. Like, and they won a national championship that year. Yeah. My senior year in high school. My junior year in high school. So I'm like, man, I want to go to Carolina. But they were stacked though. They had a nice senior class. They was they went to the Final Four that year. Or Elite Eight Elite mm-hmm. Eight that year. But Tyler Hansbrough was there, Danny Green, all those dudes. So I would have got kind of lost. Right. Not lost, no, but no, you not wouldn't. lost, but I would have been playing twenty five minutes instead of forty right. minutes like I right. should be playing. You know what I'm saying? So, so my moms and my pops was like Nah, we know what it is. Step like, in, let you know. Like, me, I'm like, no, nah, I want to go play with my homies. Like, yeah, let's go hoop. I also want to go hoop with my homies. And Texas, I went on a visit, and Coach Bonds, like, yo, he blew me away with just his approach. You know what I'm saying? Just like he knew what he had in me. You know what I mean? Right. He knew this. Like, I got. We something. ain't about to blow this. Yeah, we got I him got on cap. <laughs> I'm gonna still coach him up and be who he is. But I'm gonna take care of him while he's down here. I'm still a 17 year old kid. But yeah. I know what I got. He gave me the rock every time, even when we was working out. And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even know this was like this. We had a couple McDonald's All-Americans too. So once I got down there, he gave me the rock. But as I was going through the visit, I'm like, hey, I've never been to Texas before. It's yeah. cool, nice weather. There's a lot of girls down here. Yeah, I'm gonna be far away from the crib. Nobody can just pull up on me like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can focus. just really focus on me, get away. So I'm like, perfect, and yeah. I end up Doing what I did down there. Now I'm forever tied there. They weren't. They got my logo on the jersey. Oh, they about to have my logo. They got my name on the well, practice. First of all, you did I'm it like, big. They got your name. I'm on like, what you did. Hey, they better put your name somewhere. I'm like, what you I, did up there man, now. I went. I went down there. And did what I was supposed to do. I'm yeah, like, man, I'm forever did. tied there. That shit pretty cool. Now when I think about it, because I sit back and like, shit. Legacy. If I done went to Carolina, like I'd have just been in a another name, another to the name, and twenty jerseys up there. Now I go to Texas, just me and TJ Four and another guy. Right, that's TJ literally Ford. why. I went to DePaul over like going to like, you know, Kansas was the other big school. It was my final two. You was McDonald's, that was crazy you went to DePaul. And so it was like, that's what it came down to for me. It was like, you know, I could stay here. My family could come watch me every game. You know what I'm saying? All of the all of yeah. the conference games is pretty much in the Midwest. They could drive and come to them games. But more importantly, it was like, what we about to do here, myself, Bobby, and Lance, like we all Chicago boys, it was so much hype around yeah, yeah. bringing back from when Mark Aguirre and Terry Cummins yeah, yeah. and everybody had did in the early 80s, like they hadn't had that. Like what we was gonna mean to the city yeah, and mean to yeah. Chicago, and like I'm, I'm heavy, I, everything in me is Chicago, so mm-hmm. it was like, psh- this your chance to make a stamp, like yeah. really make a, we all from the Chicago public schools, like we not from like a sub- suburban, or like all of us. Mm-hmm. Everything, I, 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 I everything say mm-hmm. Chicago, 60628, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the zip code is like, so it was like me going there, it's like you saying, it's not like, all right, I'm like, not, not like you can't go to UNC or yeah. I can't go to Kansas and make my imprint, but even still, like you ain't about to really, Succeed, Mike. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't about to top that or like, not that you going to try and be the top dog or whatever, but like, just you know that, all right, at Texas, this, like, when I go do what I do, it's gonna ring. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. it's gonna ring sure. for real. It ain't gonna sure. be like, all right, like all of these. Like, it's like you one of the few. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and you see that now, and like, all these years later, it mean that much more to you. I committed to St. John. Like I was coming off that uh, Ryan Ortiz, Eric Barkley, they was kind of <laughs> making. It was still know. a good team. That was still a good <laughs> era. Barkley, Saint Thor, John, like though. Anthony Glover, like they, they was wearing Jordan. They, <laughs> uh, me and Omar, because Omar wanted to go to North Carolina. Omar Cook was nice. I told North Carolina, nice. like, yeah, you get Omar and Eddie Griffin, I'm definitely coming. You know what, <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I want to squad up. Yeah, yeah. And Eddie went to Seton Hall, and they picked Adam Boom over Omar Cook. Omar Cook led the nation in assists his Omar freshman year. Omar was nice. You know what I'm saying? Omar was so nice. So when he led the nation in assists his freshman year, I was like, I made a great decision. Cause I was <laughs> right, right. Focus, catching, <laughs> catching that lives, thing, yeah. dunking that jump. But yeah, I committed to St. John's and, and I decided like I'm out. What I want to ask you is like, when you, when like back when y'all was in OKC, when it's you, Russ, and James Harden, mm-hmm. 
Like, did y'all three know that it was no, like, no. like, okay, y'all about to all three be future MVPs and y'all all three is this cold. No, I, I, like, no, I'm I, talking no. about like no. this cold. Like, I know playing against y'all, I didn't like, like obviously you stuck out the most and like, you know, Russ and, Russ and, 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 and James was, was, was good, but like, I never was sitting there like, okay, all three of them gonna be an MVP at some Neither. point in this league. Like that's like crazy. Like, they, like you going in practice and going at it with them dudes. Like, and the relationship, the tightness y'all had. I felt mm -hmm. like that was like, like to me, in my opinion, like that was like one of the biggest screw ups that they let that they allowed. I don't know what the whole how anything went, but just the fact that they just because the 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 tightness of y'all and that yeah. they, that reminded me of how we were. Yeah, like you know, what I'm saying it was three young boys that still should be in college level, yeah, like, yeah. but they was like all like young and hungry out there, dogs, Man, and they was, was all, but they loved each other. They was yeah. everywhere together. Every time you saw one, you almost saw yeah. all of y'all, and that yeah. reminded me of how we was. So yeah. I was like how they let this break up? <laughs> like these dudes love each other. These three young boys is coming up yeah. superstars. That it ain't no hating on each other. Everybody yeah. love each other and they all rock together. And it's like, how you don't keep that? How many years is it that you had in Seattle? One or two? Just one. Like, how, like I, first of all, let me just say, I love Seattle. Oh. I love going to play in Seattle. I felt like Seattle was a great no city for the league. Like it yeah. was, it was a cool, one of the coolest cities to fly into and you know, be there for a day or two and like vibe out. Yeah. I love Seattle and I, you know, I wish, I hope they, you know, get a team back there and all that. But I want you to talk about, you know, cause I felt like you and Jeff Green had a, had yeah. a, had a cool first year there. And I mean, just talk about your experience there in Seattle with yeah. the, you know, with the Sonics. Man, it was fun. The fans came out and supported from day one, you know, just even when I had a work out there, they was always, you know, they were at the uh, facility, you know, mm -hmm. trying to greet us and make sure we felt at home from day one, you know, even before we were drafted. So, you know, every day in practice, they coming out supporting us. Even we were bad, we, we were 20 and 62 that year. <laughs> the fans really didn't come out to support so much because of what was going on up top with the, you know, they were trying to move the team to relocation. So it was, the fans were kind of at odds with, the, odds with the organization, but they still supported the players. So it was kind of weird being in the city um, and playing in the city, but the love that they showed us, you know, just walking around and just being players there, it was cool, man. It was, they definitely deserve a team because that market is just a basketball market, right. you know what I mean? And then how was that like going from that and like, all right, like your rookie year, you know, for me, it was like, all right, I'm in LA, I give me a place, I'm staying here for the yeah. next four years. Then you like, boom, y'all get moved. Yeah. And it's like, OKC, I don't even know if like, yeah. I had never been to Oklahoma yeah. City for anything yeah. until we started playing there. So yeah. like, I don't know if you was like that, or like that was your first time, like what is yeah, Oklahoma see, City? See, when we at, I spent a lot of time at Texas, so we play Oklahoma a lot oh, okay. in Oklahoma State. There so it's a six hour drive from Austin, Texas to Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. So all my friends would come up from Texas. I'm always, that was like my home being in Oklahoma City for that, for that long. So. I was cool with going back to the uh, Midwest because I was so close to you know to the, to the university. So yeah. that was that was help, that helped my transition. But as far as just like moving the organization, we didn't have a practice facility for a second. We ain't had no logo. We ain't even know <laughs> who was gonna be on the team. How the like, jersey gonna look? Yeah, <laughs> like we got there. I stayed in the hotel, the haunted hotel oh, they was talking about. I the stayed old there. Hotel? Yeah, the crazy the, um, one. The Skirvin. I stayed there for like the first two months until you found the crib. Like so, we didn't even so, know. So wait, did you ever have any? Any type of crazy. No, no, nah, nah, nah. I haven't and either. That's nah, why I'm was, asking. Like, that's how you got the bed bugs. Yeah, that's what he that? said. Yeah, I ain't never know. felt. I ain't never had nothing crazy. Nah, anymore. it was. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I spent two months in there, and it, so with that move was. And I bought a house in Seattle, so just moving so fast, it was. It was weird, but we figured it out after a while. Hey, this one, this one question that we that we love to ask everybody. Like, so when you first when you first got drafted, <clears> right? It's your first time coming into some change, you know what I'm saying? Well, you can do something. What's yeah. like, what's the what's the wildest thing or the or the yeah. or the craziest thing you did? Like buying something when you got some bread, like cause we all we all guilty of like we we young boys, whether it's, yeah. he was 18, I was 19. What were you 19? Yeah, 18. 18. So you young, yeah. 18, 18. I'm 19. So 
you get dropped in our minds, we rich. Yeah, yeah. We we not rich, we wealthy. Yeah, yeah. We that's what we think. And we don't know nothing. Life. Right. So so what did you do? Man, <laughs> you know it's not it's not like one thing. It's just like oh, you, you just you just spend it on stupid stuff. Like I'm buying five or six Xboxes for no reason. Hey, like, listen, one for every room, yeah, man. Like seven, eight TVs. Every like, room gotta have this. Yeah, you know, I'm buying like, <laughs> I'm, I'm buying like coins for my Xbox. I'm spending like a thousand dollars to get the VC on my Xbox. Yeah. I'm like just doing wild shit and like just doing a bunch of electronics. Just Boy, in-game stuff, just, purchases uh, is crazy yeah, over here. Like, oh, <laughs> Mama, I, I sent you, I sent you this, I sent you two of these because you gonna need this. I got yes. this one in house. Hey look, go to the store and just get four copies of Madden just because <laughs> like hey, one of them gonna scratch. I need like four, like look. For real. But crazy, you know it's just crazy. stupid stuff. You know you just buying for no reason. Buying for no reason. You wouldn't man. buy if you ain't had this type of money. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, this. Uh, I think it was like lockout year. I think it was like lockout year, right? Yeah. You went on a uh, off the court turn. I'm talking about everywhere you was going. Like like from that summer on, you was yeah. fifty ball in yeah. every tournament from yeah. Drew League to the yeah. Rucker to just everywhere you was going. To see your off the court swag when you don't got no coats around, I can just give fifties out, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. like you giving charity out every city. <laughs> and it was that was an amazing yeah. and it was a run and like game. you know about this because we hear it be classic, classic kill mode during the summer. Like you hear people, he done been at this workout or that mm-hmm. workout and he done killed, but you never really see it. Yeah. The first time I ever seen somebody kill and go to all these places for the summer was you. <laughs> it was in a time where footage was out there yeah, where yeah. everybody was taping everything. Mm-hmm. Cause we done went to summers where we done went down in Miami, we going everywhere, yeah. we we come to hoop. Yeah. Killing. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Hooping, That's yeah. when it wasn't it wasn't no working out with each other. We coming down there to you straight play to five on yeah. five and hoop and hoop against y'all yep. every single day and get our game, work yep. on our game yep. like that way. Yep. But I seen you Go on the tour that <laughs> summer, boy. Man. I was like, you know, we just like the we like the hoop though. You know, yeah. we was hooping everywhere, and everybody Word. was just trying to get together and just like play. You know what I'm saying? Just at least a game style somewhere. You know, so we had all them games. I'm like, ain't no structure. We all playing pickup. So yeah, whoever the best out here, they're not gonna get the most shots. So everywhere I went. And we was just rolling the rolling the red carpet out for me. And I'm like, man, I'm just spawning right now. I'm just getting my action in because yeah. I can't really get no game action. Can't get no game. You can't I'm get tired of working good. out. Man. Right. I'm just trying to hoop. Yeah. So, so so what did that do like for your confidence? Just man, to see how like that was a key summer. Yeah, for Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like I know, key, I know. Like when we blessing, went to man. we be in Chicago playing. You you know how it is. Like you had your best year when you come fresh in the camp yeah. and fresh into our bopping. Like you yeah. really you really been right leading to it into your highest peak. Like you've been playing, you've yep. been working out, yep. you've been getting it in and you feeling like you've been killing fools. Like yep. like we was looking, I'm like, yo, <laughs> that <laughs> boy like really making a Man, statement right now, letting summer, it be known like, that's what summer, y'all gonna do? Going into that summer, we had just lost in the um, Western Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was our first time there. And you know, I'm working out a month out, well not even a month, like two weeks after the season over with. And not expecting the lockout, you know, so right. I'm just working out and hooping like I usually do, and we just going everywhere. Just like man, just let's just get together and work out at least. Is that, is that when you had the van? Yeah, the yeah, van, yeah. Man, I had the <laughs> then I was going playing home. so much. Nike was like, might as well just turn hey. it into something. <laughs> hey, so I'm like, cool. That was a dope little movement y'all saying. had with the van, it was bro. Cool I to remember keep that. basketball going because that, that lockout, man, that was yeah, that was whack. That was whack. It was whack, but it, I know it has to happen when it comes to the business, but we just had to keep the ball going, you know what I'm saying? It was tough to not play. Everybody was fiending for hoops it was, at a, It was a good summer, because I watched you all summer, 50 ball Man. every state. It seemed like you was in every state, just coming in, just 50. Man, you know how it feel when you out there just hooping and you got the rock all the time, you just working on stuff. And everybody want to see, and how the, how live the crowd. Yeah. Nah. That's that, that free money. Yeah. That, that, that yep. just, we, we in here. Yeah. I'm taking 50 shots one game. <laughs> like, I'm taking like 55 <laughs> shots. I'm like, I just need to get them up to see if I can. And <laughs> you was shooting that jump deep as hell. Deep. <laughs> when you was coming up, somebody that, th- that the world might not know or somebody that you pay attention, the world might do know or heard of them, 
that you was like a walking bucket. Like, like every time you see him, like, man, he scored like with the best of them. Hmm. Like, who was, who was that person that you was like, man, this man? Oh, uh, man, it was just anywhere or just like in the league? And there's a lot of dudes that's walking around here that get buckets on anybody in Definitely the league. Definitely do, not no league, but it was like All just right. somebody that nobody might not know. So this dude around the neighborhood, his name was Kurt Smith. He was like 5'9", point guard, but he was one of those, like, uh, he played like uh, Sam Cassell. How would be a little one? You know when they back you down, they back anybody down, shoot the turnaround, Jay. It's not, it don't look good, but he's scoring every time. So it's like, he's still impacting the game. It was like, no matter who was on him, we play outdoors all the time. Even when I was in the league, league dudes playing against him, like, <laughs> he's still getting, he's still getting buckets, buckets, getting to where he want to get to. He played at Drake, and he played back in the day, and he was in the Capital Classic, playing mm. in the Capital Classic. So he's actually played some ball. Yeah. He could have played in the league. He was in, had a uh, training camp. You know how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> you get yeah, the right. training camp Probably advice. Yeah. But he was still solid up until he was probably 36, 37, playing around the neighborhood. It was like. Still getting bucked. He still had game, though. He was, he, all the OG moves that yeah. I learned, back yeah. down, turnaround yeah. phase, all that, he was doing all of it. Who, who taught you your, how to shoot? Like, who taught you your form? Like, you got good form. Like, yeah. Yeah. you uh, be so tall, you got high arc, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got good form, and you've been having good form since the first time I seen you play. Man, I've been crafting this joint for a minute. You know, so when I was like nine or 10, I used to have to lay on my back um, and watch uh, we and watch Martin until the commercials go off and I, I used to lay up like this. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's a until real one right there. That until the commercials every commercial, call, call, every commercial I could break, I'd do that for like two ep two uh, episodes. Yeah. i do that every night. And that's and that should just had me stuck there for a second. Who made you do like My who? godfather who taught me how to play when I, he, Bought me in the gym at seven and yeah. hand me the ball. So he was doing little stuff like that in my workout routine and that shit just stuck. I was I had to I had to like shoot so many shots, just one arm in front of the rim. Yeah. All the way back to the three point line, just just working every little single every small part and it just got to where it is now. Man, that's crazy. Word, that's why I, I'm telling you, that's, that's why I be trying to get my kids to do like watch the game every time out, yeah. knock out ten push ups, five yeah, push ups, yeah, whatever, like the whole like game, every yeah. commercial, like just get it in. Yeah, we ain't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know we, we came in and man, we got the privilege to be with Jordan. That's and, crazy. Uh, How was represent that? Jordan? And, crazy. Y'all work out with him. You ever work out with him? Yeah, yeah. we used yeah. to play against him when I was in high school. He was All in high school and college. We used to go to Santa Barbara and we was invited to his camp and we used to play against him. How was he in a pickup though? What? How he was in a whole lot of cursing and a whole lot of buckets. He was getting buckets easy. What? Still, still like. Like easy, whatever you want. When he got to the league, when he was with the Wizards, he was getting buckets easy. <laughs> still. Still, like they like a 40 year old man averaging 20, 21. That's good. That's getting buckets in the league. Yeah, and yeah. like this is Big the physical league. This too. is where they can touch you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Nah, man, come yeah. on now. Nah. He was posting up them the youngest, man, he youngest too. It. All of them to average that. Like, come on now, nah, be for real. But yeah, he different. We got the opportunity to play with him, and I mean, not play with him, but uh, wear his shoes and represent his brand and mm -hmm. so forth. On you got to deal with Nike, and yeah, man, you got the KDs. Like my son got. KDs. You and, remember you my daughter had a yeah, gang go like, it's crazy. like them KDs, them. like they a hot commodity. And I remember when they was like, they were saying something like you had to sell a, a certain amount of shoes. To, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. man, they loving it. Like everybody was supporting and, yeah, and wanting, and you got a dope shoe. Appreciate like, how does it. it feel to have a dope shoe? I know coming up from where we come from man. and to have your own shoe and it's people rocking dream. with it. Oh God, and they man. dope. And like you say, people rocking with it too. Like people that's rocking with yeah, you. Yeah, man, it's yeah. crazy, man. Happened so fast from always getting the East Bays and opening the East Bays. Oh, right, like shoes. you in the East Bay, bro. Like, <laughs> like AU teams getting the KDs yeah, for the season. Man, it like, just happened like, so fast, I still can't, it's just, it's crazy to think about it and then see everybody showing love and, and, and appreciating the stories I bring within the shoe too, it's just a journey. And just, I'm at about 12 shoes right now and they told crazy, me only bro. me, MJ, Kobe and Bron got 12 signature shoes. Right. I'm I mean, like, you dropping me? albums, man. You like, oh, like, yeah, man. That's crazy. <laughs> you dropping Word albums. Up. I'm like, me? I'm like, where I come from and where I grew up. Like, that's amazing. Just like dog. wanting to do stuff like that and to actually do it is like, man, it's crazy. All up from the game, though. So I appreciate just 
<laughs> Hooping but every day that got me that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Putting your DNA on your shoes, putting yeah, stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Like Everything. Stuff that's going to live on. Even though people might not know about it, but it's going to live on in yeah. my family forever. You know what I'm saying? Word that's up. the most important thing. Word up. What I want to ask you is like, when you, when like back when y'all was in OKC, when it's you, Russ, and James Harden. Mm-hmm. Like, did y'all three know <laughs> that it was no. like, like no. okay, y'all about to all three be future MVPs and y'all all three is this cold. No, I, I, like, no, I'm no, talking no. about like no. this cold. Like, I know playing against y'all, I didn't like, like obviously you stuck out the most and like, you know, Russ and, Russ and, 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 and James was, was, was good, but like, I never was sitting there like, okay, all three of them gonna be an MVP Me at some Me point either. in this league. Like, that's like crazy. Like, Me either. They, like you going and practice and going at it with them dudes, like, and the relationship, the tightness y'all had, I felt mm-hmm. like that was like, like to me, in my opinion, like that was like one of the biggest screw ups that they let, that they allowed, I don't know what the whole, how anything went, but just the fact that they, just because the the, the tightness of y'all, and that, yeah. they, that reminded me of how we were. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was three young boys that still should be in college level, yeah, like, yeah. but they was like, all like young and hungry out there, dogs, yeah, and they was, was all, but they loved each other. They was yeah. everywhere together. Every time you saw one, you almost saw yeah. all of y'all, and that yeah. reminded me of how we was. So yeah. I was like, how they let this break up? <laughs> like these dudes love each other. These three young boys is coming up yeah. superstars. That it ain't no hating on each other. Everybody yeah. love each other, and they all rock together. And it's like, how you don't keep that? Man, you know, it's, you know how the business gets sometimes. It's, it's out of your control to right. the point where it's just like. Even a great thing, you just man, we still we still gonna be homies, but like, and we still gonna appreciate the little days we had together. But it's like, man, if we just stuck together for man. real, like for real, for real. If we all just stuck together and doing what we was doing, it just looked beautiful. But at the same time, it still worked out for all three of us because yeah, we all went on our own separate paths and kind of created our own lanes for ourselves and made a name for ourselves and had some team success along the way. So. It worked out perfectly because we had enough time with each other to kind of know who, to kind of build a relationship and and appreciate the how good he, we were. Because mm. playing with Russ and I never seen somebody jump that high or run that fast or be that explosive yeah. ever on yeah. in anything in my life. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? And to see that up close every night and know that he has a physical advantage over every point guard he playing against, hey. I had the utmost confidence walking into every game. I'm like, my man is coming to go hard <laughs> on all y'all. On yeah. everybody. And I know it. Y'all don't know it yet, but he going hard on hey, everybody. Right, for real. He back down to the point where it's like, yo, chill. Chill for a second, big homie, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But you like that aggression. And then out of nowhere, because Russ come from out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. He wasn't even playing his first year at UCLA. Coming off the bench, he dunk on somebody. They're like, who, who was number zero? Word. Yeah. Oh, all right, bet. We got Darren Collison and, and Aaron Aflalo. Then the next year, that's when he jumped on his sophomore year. And now he was a full pick. And now he's starting point guard. I'm like, yo, this remind me of me. Just coming out yeah. of nowhere and just happen, stuff happening yeah, so right. fast. Yeah. And then James the same way. I'm like, our paths are just too too to parallel, like we all grew up in different sections, but I see the similarities in how we came up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I just, and James, oh, James, James is <laughs> like, different. The day, I seen that <laughs> in, high, in college, in high school, like yeah, throwing behind the, the back nation, passes right? and pick and roll in high school. Right. Yeah. Like who, nobody doing that. Coming off the pick and roll, manipulating the pick and roll in high school at 6'5", yeah. strong, shooting the J, I'm like, yeah, he different. Yeah, it just, I him. think it just speaks to, each one of y'all's yeah. individual greatness for what y'all been able to, like you say, as it, 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 dope as y'all were together and how yeah. y'all had it going and then to have it be pulled apart like that, you know, everybody go their separate ways, but it's still, y'all all have still succeeded in, in putting y'all self yeah. on, that, on that level, like where like, look. Oh, y'all got your own shoe. <laughs> <laughs> everybody crazy, got their right? own shoe, yep. every, but everybody got their own MVP pit. trophy. Yeah, yep. like, more importantly, like that's, that's, importantly, like, that's bigger than a shoe. Yeah. And more importantly, like our career is gonna be tied together forever, forever, forever. forever. Like, no matter I what we do. And like, like, like they say, the little kids to say this is Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Like they like, yo, nah, them no. dudes <laughs> play together. Like how they didn't like, nah, they ain't play. That's like that's real though. Like what? That's for real. Like yo, five more years, they even like hold up. Nah, they ain't played. Like that didn't happen. Like this, like what's already happened to today but like you said it's just it's just crazy to see how far we all come like how proud, so fast how proud was you to see 
James finally get MVP Man. and see Russell Westbrook win MVP and, and do what they did. Like I know like 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 you said, y'all y'all played together and y'all st- went on a whole journey, got all the way to the championship and could have yeah. won it yeah. early. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then y'all y'all break up and then you see them shine and get MVP. Yeah. How and you contrary to what people would believe about y'all relationships, we know as, you know what I'm saying, as yeah. players that outside of like, we don't, we as players don't feel the need to answer or address scenarios that the media or whoever exactly. may create or whatever they think like yeah. they can create whatever narrative they want and we find behind closed doors and <clears throat> completely supporting and rooting for each other but yeah. they think whatever narrative they think so yeah. for you to see those dudes like he's saying how did that feel to yeah. see them dudes achieve those goals and you know what I'm saying that level of success and you knowing already yeah. how it feels man you just seeing you just go back to them days they we working out after practice and competing you know, who can shoot the father's jump shot, how many j- jump shots we can make from the corner, playing one-on-one, playing pickup, you know, in them little couple weeks before training camp start. You just think of all that stuff and you crafting as youngsters and to see, you know, dudes that you put in so much time with, cause like y'all know, we spend more time with my your other. teammates than mm-hmm. you do your family. So like, you really getting to know these dudes and now they on stage getting MVPs and they making so much money for them and their families and they starting families and like dudes doing so much with their lives. I'm like, yo, we getting old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we getting older in this league, but look yeah. where we come from. So hell yeah, I was proud. Cause like once you in like a, once you get something in this league and you got other guys in that club with you, it's right. just like good to share those experiences, man. So that's something, like I said, we're going to be tied together forever. You got any funny stories with you and, and Westbrook and James Hoy when y'all was younger, like they was rookies or something like that, you made them do something, go and get the donuts. Nah, stuff. cause we was all so young. We was, I remember one time. I know y'all was silly. I this remember one. one time, I remember one time James Hart got so mad. We had Nate Robinson on the team. Oh God. And James and, <laughs> James and even Eric Mayne, they used to always play around. So we in practice one day, we all at practice, we wondering when Nate at, <laughs> Nate, Nate runs in the James car, driver's car, all the way around the corner, park it at the car wash, ain't tell nobody. He ran into it? But he, no, he, he just re- parked it at the car the, wash. The best part is that he risked being late for this. <laughs> yes. He's nowhere to be found wow. to, to achieve. This. He taking pictures like ghost riding his joint, <laughs> like on top of the hood. <laughs> Pops is joint at the at the car wash and like ain't tell nobody. <laughs> we walk in the locker room, James like, yo, where my keys at? He's steaming, he hot. He's ready to fight Nate almost, like pissed. <laughs> you know, when somebody just moves something, you trying right. to leave out of nowhere, you irritated. Man, like that's the first time I ever we ever got into anything as a team like that. <laughs> <laughs> when Nate come on the team, and I'm like it was hilarious, and I see why James was pissed. But like that was the first time anything happened. I'm like, yeah, these boys are different in the league, especially dudes like Nate. <laughs> you said, Nate like, like I wanna. Did y'all ever have like? Did y'all play like one on ones, King of the oh, Hill? Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. I just look at that. Like, even just thinking about that, that just makes me feel oh, like yeah, yeah. when I see the clips of y'all, like the the USA team, because yeah. that's like all y'all boys is Olympic team level. Like, how was that? And how oh, did that? Was, like, that had to be like one of the best examples of iron sharpening iron. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. all three boys sparring in one on ones, King of the Hills, mm. five spots, three spots, yeah. three dribbles, whatever. Like. <laughs> It don't yeah. get no better than that. Man, we used to bump and practice. That's though. what I'm saying. And we used to play five on five, and James used to have his, the bench mob, and me and Russell be on the um, the first team. I'm talking about every practice. If we not going full court, we going half court control scrimmage. Every practice, Scott Brooks, we not calling no fouls. It's going down. We going down, and we playing a little side throw it at the elbow one on one, just in the middle of practice, just to just to throw something in there. We doing this every day. I'm talking about dudes as we hacking, we throwing elbows, we going all yeah. we going hard in practice. So when we got into the games, nobody was punking us. Yeah. We right. had we had Perk too when he got there. Yeah. He was he was really the enforcer and knew what right. was going on, which yeah. he learned under KG. So it was mm-hmm. like we had that influence in our locker room yeah. too. And it was just like, man, we just took off to another level when Scott Brooks was just like, he just let us go after that. And man, we got so much better, like just everything. I was learning from James on how to play on the pick and roll. I was learning from Russ to how to win to be, win to be explosive in the lane and go for a left. You know, I was learning yeah. a little stuff from them, just seeing them every day. 
and you got your coach who just empowering y'all, to, empowering us to be who we are. It was just perfect situation because a lot of dudes come in the league and they don't have that situation, but they might be just as good. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. just a difference, right? Yeah, a little small definitely. difference in careers. You know what I mean? It's like we was in a perfect environment for our skill. Yeah, that's how we was when we was with the Clippers, like because we was on the bench and it was. Me, him, and Corey McGetty on the bench. And Crazy bench. Then you got Come Keon, on. then you got L.O. and, and L. Nim starting. Y'all had a mind. We used to go through wars. For real. How was the one on ones? Uh, man, listen, we used to for oh. real get into like fights and practice. Like, like it'd be like it. practices in like that, like fights. Like, <laughs> yeah. People for real. Yeah, I mean, like y'all ain't gonna act right. Just get up out of here. Get <laughs> like, up out of here. For real. AG, <laughs> like, nah, y'all got y'all tripping. Y'all can't be fighting. Like we used to for real. It used to get to that point because it was so many, like I say, it was so many of us all at the same age. First or second year, all trying to kick their career off. Like yeah. nobody ain't looking at nobody. Like you not that much better than me. You mm-hmm. don't just get the you know what I'm saying yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the nod like that. Like I could I could I could work you out yeah, right now. And I'm yeah. about to go at you. So yeah, yeah. It was every day back and forth, nonstop. Y'all practiced a lot. Yeah. yeah, we was young. Back it was then. Like, come on, man. Back then, and we wasn't a winning team. Like, yeah, we was y'all was getting in, huh? everywhere. It wasn't none of that. And like, we young and and just. We don't got no. We don't even know better, so yeah. it ain't like we know. Like, hey, we shouldn't be like, nah. It's whatever they we saying. Get, do we like? Doing. If people seen me and Q play against each other, they thought they we didn't like each friend. other. Yeah, nah. <laughs> that's how, it's that's how to be. hard we go at each other. Yeah. They seen it like we worked out for the Nets. Me and Q was going at each other. They had going the number one pick. We was going at each other so hard. I ain't even in the top. Like, they was over there looking <laughs> like. We don't even know what to say. Yeah. We don't even want to get in between. Like yeah. that's how it's that supposed be, to go. You yeah. sharpening each other. Yep. Like yep. you got the opportunity. The last time a three P that's been done is two thousand and three, Shaq and Kobe. Yeah, you know that's the last time a three P been done. You got the opportunity to be in the history books of that with the yeah. Michael Jordans, with the Shaqs, with the Kobe's. Yeah. You know, with the Scottie Pippins, the Ro- the Dennis Robbins. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, how you feel about you know knowing you know your history and you know you grew up watching all that? How you feel about getting that opportunity to Man, to win three and and the, the what's the constant grind? Y'all yeah. going to championship after championship after championship. Yeah, Explain yeah. the constant grind to get there. Man, you know. It's- First of all, the opportunity to do that, man, is just, especially with a great group. You know, it's rare, especially in the league, man. When you get a nice, you know, time period to. Um, settle in with a group and, and play basketball and learn and grow. So it's good to have that opportunity. And then to win two, you know, and how special that was and that experience and, you know, to come back with the same team. Like I said, that business sometimes gets in the way. But um, that grind every day, man, is just that focus that you have to be on and like in the playoffs, you know what I'm saying, in the series. You know, when you get to each each round, it gets, it gets a little tougher and tougher. The rotation is a little, uh, you know, tighter. You might play seven to eight guys. Now you got to play 42 minutes instead of 37. Right. So you got to be more focused for a couple more minutes, you know. So yeah. it's like you just got to reach another level every day um, with your mentality. And that's tough to get up every day and do that. You know what I mean? Out your bed and really focus on, like, can I be the greatest finals level focus that I can be every right. single night? And that's the grind, you know, and it's hard to do it, but that's what we get paid to do. That's what we love to do. We, we what else can we, we are right. we supposed to do with our Ooh. time? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like, that's the hardest part is the mental part of it now, because when you win and you get some success, you expect to wake up and just be like, shit, I'm just chilling. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got two chips. I'm doing whatever I want. I got bread. I can fly wherever I want. Let's just, but. I just want to keep playing and see how good I can get at the game, and then if I get we accomplish a lot as a team, that's that's even better. But that grind of getting up every day, man, it's tough. Yeah, it's so, tough. So for me, what I, like I look at you is like one of the you know what I'm saying one of the best offensive players in the history of the game, right? So how do you feel when you walk into the gym? <clears throat> And you, you know, you getting ready to hoop, you getting ready for the game. You got Steph and Clay on your team. Like when you already yourself is one of the most lethal offensive weapons in the history of the game. Mm-hmm. And then you sit there and you turn around while you throwing your jersey on. You got two of the greatest shooters to yeah. ever put jerseys on, period. Man. That's just with you. Like how like 
How do that feel? Like you already a, a like like Steve Knight say you a bad <laughs> man. Appreciate you feel me? And then you got you got you got these two light skinned murderers with yeah, you. Yeah. I mean it's just you got you got dudes that can shoot that accurate, you know, that consistent, you know what I'm saying? It's just like you they reliable every night with the jump shot, you yeah. know. And you gotta respect everything else because it opened up so much for the team, man. Like just knowing that you're running with some dudes that love to play and that work on the craft every day and that care about it just as much as you and make it coming into every game fun, you know, because you never know what they could do. Clay hit 14 threes <laughs> in a game. That was, and that's what's on random day. Crazy. Like, or back to back, I'm like. After struggling. After struggling, I'm like, where is this? I've never seen this before. <laughs> Out of nowhere like that. And then Steph will hit 51 and three quarters and then it's just like, the crowd going crazy, feel like you're at the park playing with these dudes. And it's like, that's that real, that's how basketball is supposed to be played. And that's how I enjoy playing the game. And man, you got three snipers out there like that, dudes that can shoot that thing. It's like, unfair. Come on, man. <laughs> it's not it's good to see that ball go to the rim and <laughs> hit yeah. that net after a jump shot. That's Boy. one of the best feelings on the court. How, how, how has it sharpened your game from taking 20 to 25 shots? Mm -hmm getting your 30 or your 35 points to now, you might get 30 with 12 shots. You might get 30 mm -hmm. with 15 shots. You don't really get no more than 15 shots. But to go from shooting all the, all the shots to every shot got to count. Yeah. When you shoot, how much did that sharpen you up? Cause yeah, I know that, that helped you out a yeah. lot. Like you see it like. Yeah, man. It was, it was, it was a adjustment. Cause I didn't realize how tough that is on a night to night basis when um, if I'm one for seven, two for eight to start the game, I usually can shoot myself out of that and get back to 12 for 20, whatever, yeah. whatever 48, 49% is. But mm -hmm. on this team, I might not be able to have the time, first of all, because we blowing teams out sometimes right. to get back to where I want to get to, yeah. which is a rhythm where I feel good, my next shot feel good, not just a percentage, but yeah. just like, I know my jump shot feel perfect right, right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like. It was taking me a little bit longer to get back to that point, whereas like I'm feeling great. So now I'm like, all right, if I get four shots the first quarter, I gotta make sure a couple of those are the easiest ones I can get, or mm -hmm. not just like, all right, I'm gonna shoot a step back three my first shot, or a catch and shoot fade away my second shot. I'm just like, let me get the easy ones first, then open my game up from the layups to the mid range, and then if I'm feeling good, I can knock down three. So. I just really started thinking like a big, like can yeah. I get some lays? Can I get a mid range? Can, like mm -hmm. let me see if I couple can get a couple bunnies first <laughs> <laughs> and see how my my J working tonight. Cause yeah. if it's not working, then I can't be forcing all night from the three just trying to find it. Then I'm, I end up shooting 44% on the, on the week. And then I'm like, oh shit, I'm in a week long right. slum. And I'm like, let me hurry up and get out. I, I don't wanna even think about that. I just wanna make sure my J feel good. I wanna shoot well every night take good shots and it's good figuring the game out that way because yeah. anybody can play erratic and like, I got 40 shots to work with tonight. Let me just do anything. Like, right. That's when you just, take you take your heat check. You don't take no heat check. No, nah, I try not. I still do. I still got not them as, games. No, not as many. As you no, used not to. as many. No, I still <laughs> had those games. Like last game, I'm searching for a bucket because yeah. I couldn't make right. a shot or we couldn't generate no offense. So I'm like, all right, Hezzy three. That's a terrible shot, but I'm just praying it go in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I know it's not gonna go in, but let me just try it. But I don't want to take those shots no, no more. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that little stuff out the game. That's where I'm at with it now. So, so talk about when you like how it felt to actually win the championship. Like when you won the first <laughs> one. Like, I mean, obviously you didn't win the second one, and you trying to get the third. But like when you like, yeah. had, like. Like, what did that feel like to you? Like, what did you do? Like, did that like make you feel like, all right, like people could shut the hell up talking to me or did you just like not even pay attention that were you just too happy and just into your happiness with yeah. it? Or like, did you go like, man, I'm about to ball out this summer. What am I about <laughs> to do? You like, I'm about. a champ. Like, nobody can't say nothing to me. Like, yeah. champ, I'm about to go crazy this yeah. summer. Like, like we talked to JR, like he went shirtless. He went yeah. shirtless, JR. Like, what, did you do anything like crazy, like yeah. wild? Or was you just like, how was you? So I, I watched the NBA so much and I watch all those moments, you know, growing up and you just, I was just seeing so many, the celebration, the confetti, the the, mm -hmm. the, cer the ceremony and 
families on the court taking pictures and just the music behind that. So right. I'm just like thinking about that all the time before you win a chip. Like I wanna see what that's like. So I just wanna experience what it's like when that buzzer go off and you know you're a champ and mm -hmm. everybody running from the sideline. Like those visuals, that's all I was thinking about. Like damn, my family at? I know how they gonna come down. They gonna meet me in the back, <laughs> right. taking he pictures. Like, <laughs> I, just wanted to, I just wanted to really actually physically go through that moment. So when, yeah. I, when I did it and I got home, I was just sitting back replaying it. <laughs> and I went to I, I went to sleep at like six a.m. and then I woke up and I sat up on the couch the next day and watched TV, and then my summer kept going and I'm like, damn, this shit, like, <clears throat> this really what it is? Like, this is simple as it is. Like, I might have went out to the club a couple of weeks later, but I was gonna do that anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, my shit just kept going. So I'm like, I just remember like seeing you in an interview and I don't remember who did the interview. I was like, yo, they is looking for like some type of like emotional <laughs> outburst. Nah, my like, boy nah, is not like he, nah. I was like, yo, he chill right now. He yeah. like, yo, we champs, like I'm MVP. I just murdered everybody. Like, <laughs> all right, cool. Like, but Man. I'm not really about, I'm not about to cry. I'm not about to do none of this yeah, stuff that y'all, I, I but like I you could tell that they was like, especially after you gave the emotional MVP speech, I think they was like yeah, looking yeah. for looking you to for that do moment that. And again. it was like I was looking like, yo, he not he not rolling. No, like they no. trying to like they asking the questions, looking to get it out of him. No, it was like, like no, that's it was not cool what he to owned do right now no. in this moment. Like it was cool to do. Plus we knew that we had a great opportunity, and it wasn't a surprise to us. It wasn't like. Man, like let's just see what we got this year. Like we coming into the season, like we want to win a championship. We got the team to do it. Let's go do it. Let's just finish the job. So after the first one, the first one was emotional. It was different emotions. You feel more excited, and you know you want that feeling to last a little longer. But and for for me, the second one was just more like man. We we actually building something, you know. We're a nice team. Like people looking at us as one of the best teams to ever play in this game. Yeah. So it's like, that's the cool part about it. Obviously, the moment was nice. You know, mm -hmm. you want to everybody expecting you to be emotional, but it's just like knowing that you kind of stamped yourself a little bit in history so far. I'm I'm 30 years old. I'm like shit. That's cool to Still me. Still got some ways. To yeah, go. like that's pretty cool. So that's how I thought about it. Confidence is a big thing. Like, where do you get your 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 confidence from? Because I know. Like with you, you played a lot of basketball, like yeah. on the street, on the streets, off the streets, on the highest level. And I know you feel that can't no man in the oh, world yeah, yeah. guard you at yeah. all. Like you playing the game against yourself. Yeah, yeah. To, I know to I know have that confidence and, oh, yeah. and keep that confidence and yeah. know it's, that. Like where you get your confidence from? Like, let me say, there's some dudes out there I feel that that make the game tough for me. There's some defenders out there because I don't want to act like I'm just sweeping <laughs> through everybody. I yeah. respect the dudes that go hard against me every night because they make me better. And I'm always remember those type of dudes. Um, but I also know I can get mines off on anybody, I feel. Mm -hmm. So once I started doing it and um, at the playgrounds coming up, and then I was doing it in the middle school <laughs> and high school, and it went up each level. And then I did it in the finals. I was just like, oh, yeah. It stamped in my mind like nobody can stop me anywhere. Yeah. And like, or I can get my shit off anywhere and I feel good playing ball on any court and I know they're gonna pick me top five picks anywhere. Yeah. If we got <laughs> 10 guys lined up, anybody, I'm like, they. I know they're gonna pick this dude. They're gonna pick me because I can shoot and I'm tall. Yeah, <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? So I got that. I feel like I can play on any court at any time with anybody. I'm like, shit, what I gotta worry about playing ball? Yeah. Let me just hoop. And that's how just I kind of approach it and it's been fun for me ever since. Who is the, the best defender? Tony yeah. Island, dog. Them Chicago, man. Sh shout Chicago, out. that's how T.A. I, <laughs> or that boy say no first team. Shout out T.A. Okay, T.A. That's how you I know You got Bean region. and you got yeah. KD saying you the yeah. best defender. Yeah. Hey, boy, hey. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey. you hear me? Now, who is the best defender? In the league now, um, it's a lot of dudes. They guard you. Um, that, that Trevor Reese is tough. Cuddy cuz. Trevor Reese is tough because he, uh, he got IQ and he long and athletic. Long, yep. And he gonna just play with you sometimes. He might play a little bit of Matador, let you get to the cup late thing. He played a game with you. He actually yeah. a hooper. I ain't realized yeah, that until like. He got a little thinking cap on Yeah, him. he yeah, actually thinked the him. game on another level. So I like Trev, PJ Tucker, cause he just, those physical dudes, <laughs> they make me think a little bit. Cause he used to come in a game straight elbow me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, all right, I gotta get used ready for this tonight. I know what I'm meant to. So dudes like PJ Tucker, they try to get me get into me a little bit, you know, but had me thinking about other stuff. I, mean, I can't really try to body and post up, get my post up game all in time on guys like that. So I got to move around a bit. So I'm thinking as I'm having these defenders on me, and then 
Point guards usually do a good job with their hands because I'm so long in my dribble, they use their hands a lot. But if I get a little bit of space and I'm inside of a three, I feel like I'm making 100% of them. I hated guarding. <laughs> I hated guarding. All I used to do was foul, bro. I'm telling you, when I first come in the game, I'm like, all right, he's skinny, I'm strong. I'm going to make him feel me first. Pause yeah. that, but you feel me. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, I'm, that's the first thing I'm going to do is come in and throw a Man, forearm what? on him, get into his chest, trying like, look, it ain't going to be this tonight, young yeah. boy. And it's like, bro, as soon as he raised up, that's why I used to tell people, like, bro, nah, Yo, if he raise up over you, it's over. Like I'm talking about, I'm guarding, I'm guarding. As soon as he get to this area and he lift, it's curtains. It ain't, he don't see nobody. <laughs> That's how I start simplifying my game, playing against guys like that, because I grew up playing on the cross end yeah. and long, all that extra stuff. And then these dudes used to get their elbows <laughs> in me and put it, put their shoulders in me. So I'm like, let me look at this spot, run right to it and just shoot it. You know That's, what, I'm that's what I fear about the kids these days. Like. They ain't never been touched before, so it it, yeah. it, it ruffles them when they yeah. when they get a little bit physical or, or yeah man. Undermine. I mean, we when I was coming up, you couldn't call foul, you no, couldn't no. get a foul, you couldn't <laughs> like none of that stuff. Man, you too tall to have. See, my <laughs> pops used to my pops used to take me to the uh, course outside. I'm like 12, 13, and they uh, he let me play with the older dudes and. We hooping and like I get to the, I'm, I'm out there doing my thing, they old, I'm young, I'm getting to the cup easy, shooting J's yeah. easy. And you know, I try some shit, try to dunk on one of the OGs, they take me out the air on concrete. <laughs> and you like, oh shit, I, I realize what this game about. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go into the league and you see these dudes who just physical, as soon as right. they come into the game, that's their role. And so you gotta adjust and like playing outdoors. My senior year, they had this dude in, uh, on the outdoor court in, around the neighborhood. All he did was foul everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was the he was the Dennis Rodman of the. Right. The, so you, I played against that coming up. A lot of people don't realize like I was outside playing against yeah, this type of stuff. That mean but a lot. You know, I used you know to play against a dude like that uh, in the park. His name was Mississippi. You used to call him Mississippi. Strong as shit. You just, he used to just hack box all the time, heavy. They used to they used to train <laughs> my IQ. I yeah. used to still know how to get off yep. knowing that I got somebody out there intentionally yep. trying to file. Wherever you at, to shout out to Mississippi. Mississippi. If you still out yeah, there, shout out like he my was boy. You sound like you was a to and everybody. Everybody. <laughs> I want him to talk about uh, defense. Like, you long and agile and you gotta have defense. Like I thought you had good defense in OKC. Mm -hmm. Now that you on a championship winning team, they try to say that all of a sudden you got this brand new defense. Yeah, yeah. Like you didn't <laughs> yeah. block weak shot, side shots or, or yeah. play good defense. You're not a gambler. You're not the one that no, is running no. through the passing lane and no. gambling. You're not a big gambler. But you play good defense. Like yeah. you play good enough defense where you can guard the other best player yeah. and go back and forth yeah. with them. Like how does it feel to like they finally recognize like, man, yeah. I can play defense. I've been playing defense. Yeah, man, it's cool when your coaches just trust you to guard anybody. You know, they might throw me on um, James Harden for a few possessions or CP or, you know, Kyrie one possession and Braun, I have to guard him for a full series. You know what I'm saying? So, and maybe guard a four man here and there on a switch. So, just feeling like I'm not a liability out there. You know, I never wanted to be them, one of them dudes that like, yo, sub out for defense. Like, <laughs> right. I ain't never want to be one of those yeah. dudes that was on the sideline at the end of a game. So like, I always kind of play defense or try to learn defense with, with that kind of thought in the back of my mind. So like, all right, how can I stay down on pump fakes, not foul, use my length, but not gamble. If I see something, try to take it, but Using usually just try to play the percentages with my length because like if you shooting over me all night, I like my chances. Man, if you knocking them in, I'm like, you know, that's if a good I'm game. Get you to make a tough shot. Like yeah. I did my job. Yeah, like. exactly. So I try to play that way, keep it simple. And once I did that, I became, I was able to kind of guard different sizes, different styles out there, and shit. Now I can play. I, if I could play 48, they'd keep me out there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. like, as long as I could play every section of the floor, I'm solid. I want to ask you too. Uh, Top five. All time? All time, but my top five, I'll tell you my top five. All right. But out of my top five, like the 70s and 60s, I kind of leave out. Like the the Chamberlains, the Elgin Baylor, yeah, the me Jerry too. West, them me like too, just yeah. lessons, it's just all respect. But yeah. kind of them 80s on up, for real. For okay. me, that's really kind of my history here. So, so wait, let's you hear got? your top five. My, and my top five is, is Michael Jordan, of course, it's number one to me. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is number two. Kobe Bryant is number three. Shaq is number four. I just just seeing these, they dominating ability. And LeBron, probably by the end of his career, is my number five. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Going off without going off, like I said, you kind of leave the Chamberlains and stuff. You just give them yeah. they, they praise and respect and not just Always. leaving them out, but just me being an 80s baby. Mm. Who would you say your top five is? Um, mm. Mike. And if you can put them in the order. Mike, obviously. Yeah. One. Kobe, two. Um, Shaq, three. Uh, Hakeem. I was gonna say Kareem. Hakeem, four. And, um, Magic. 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 Ooh. I can't argue with that. You wanna hear mine? Yeah. I was gonna say Kareem, but I'm like, ah, Hakeem was just as good. But Kareem is the- He's the all time, but I think on the court though- He the leading in all points and everything. I know what I'm saying though. Nobody, cause come on, Hakeem had the dream. He couldn't like, be stopped on the I post. Feel like, just, I feel like Kareem played against a different generation of players though. No, nah, man, Lou Alcindor, man. From Lou Alcindor to Kareem, like he won on all levels. Nah, he's- They don't, he's, give, the, they don't give Kareem actually the praise that he actually deserved. Only person I've seen that, that I agree was with like, that. what it was is like Mike. Like, I agree with that. But Kareem, like, nah, Kareem had the most points and, and hard to get the points to me, and all that. Like, the I, hook I shot that can't nobody do. No, yeah, it's timeless. Nobody can even do this shot. Yeah, that should have still worked he today. Was doing <laughs> it, he was doing it fluently like it was like, with yeah. the shake with it and. Yeah, he was off the catch with it. As soon as he caught it. Off the he, catch, yeah. like, you can't block it and all that stuff. And he won on every level since he been playing the game. Yeah. Like every level, he was the most, the best player in the league. He was. Yeah, he was the most dominant easily. Yeah. And it was nice and graceful too. It wasn't like graceful. he was stronger than everybody. He you was, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I give him his props. Like he, for sure. he was dominating. Like No, nah, for sure. He, sh he it, it's, I'm looking at it from like a pure skill standpoint when it comes to like. Right. It's like a toss up between, to me, Kareem and Hakeem. Cause it's just like Hakeem was more skilled. Hakeem had the he would cross everything, pump fakes, J -ball. turn around, J. It just when, to me is more my taste. But when though. has like all them I players, all them players I named in my top four, they was the best player in the league more than three to four years. The best player in the league won nobody in the league better. So than if him. If, I, if Kareem was in the league with MJ, would he been the best player? Nope. It's. I'm just saying so, but Hakeem nope. was though. So he no, he, he wasn't. I mean, he he the won best two player rings. In the world was playing baseball when Hakeem but he won, two, won rings. two rings. He won two rings, but, but everybody know who was the greatest player though. That's what I'm the saying. The best player in the world was playing baseball when Hakeem. So Hakeem got. But we to be knew the best, the best player basketball for player two years, was though. For for two years. I'm saying he. I'm just saying he was yeah. the, he was the next in line after MJ. But we knew like, MJ was number one. My, Kareem, them two years that he was the best player. He would have did something with MVP Shaq. No, that's not that. That's top. No, nobody can. Well, Shaq do was the best Shaq. player. Shaq was First so of all, dominating. Time out, time out, Hakeem, time out. Hakeem is the one who Shaq gives it up to say that he gave yeah, him the business in the, in every the finals. Time. Shaq says it himself. In the he was a youngin. Young he was a youngin though. He was a youngin. Young Shaq. He was a youngin. This what I'm saying. Nah, 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 nah. This is why. This is why. Shaq, like, that was a different all, Shaq. Nobody right there. like you. This is what I'm saying. Like a different Shaq. Prime Shaq. Nobody the in the world was better than Shaq in the history of the game. Went three piece Shaq. No, 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 no. He was the most dominant person. Shaq is the most dominant player in the history of the entire game. That's what I'm saying though. So that's what nobody argued that. When when. When Kareem was doing his thing, Kareem was the best player in the world for at least four to five years. That's cool. He was. Even Wilt though, like if like Michael Wilt, Jordan like, to me was the like best player in the them, world from '89 to '97. He make all of them look like Chris Dudley dunking on them. Hmm. That's how he make them look. Yeah. Shaq. No, Shaq was Shaq was dominant, but like you said, like that little period, like when you're like the clear cut best player in the league for like more than three years, four years, then like- It's impressive. That's impressive right there. Like, yeah, if you can get three, four years of being the best player in the league. But like, I'm saying is like, Hakeem, Hakeem like, 
he he wasn't better than MJ. MJ was the best player even as before he won the championships with when MJ went to go play. MJ was still the best player in the in league. In the world. We talking about the world. world. But I'm just saying <laughs> Hakeem was still nice as shit but playing in the what? same what? league. So but crazy. if you switch them two and put Kareem, you wouldn't he you wouldn't just say he was clear cut the best player over right. MJ. That's True. what I'm saying. If you switch those like it's hard for Hakeem to be that great when MJ was in the league with him. He can't do it. You know it. what I'm saying? Like just it, like just like Carl like Malone Kareem had his time. No we ain't really had nobody that was that good in the league with him mm -hmm. like that. No, I'm not it, like MJ, like greatest of all. I'm that. not saying you that. Play your era. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like they both would have been second behind MJ. I feel yeah. I feel like you the best player in the world right now. Like you the best player in the world right now. You pick up the torch. You can be the best player in the world for another three, four, five years, and now you know half a decade of the best player. To be the best player in the NBA in the See, world. When we talk about best players though, like, I try not to even, now I, like. That ain't for you to judge, that's yeah, for it's just like They ain't for you. No, that's, it's that's, not, for, I'm not saying it's the judge, but it's just like now when we really talking about it, it's like we got, Different taste when we talking about it's the all best player. Yeah, the it's just like, even when we talk about the older guys, how you in the dominating legends. games? Like these dudes, was, these dudes really was dominating games on the same level, but one team was winning more. And so we say this guy might have been the greatest, but like these dudes was actually doing kind of the same stuff out there, like putting up the same dominant numbers. When Kobe won winning, when making the playoffs or going home he, first round, he was still he, killing. He was the best That's player what I'm in the like, world. He was still, still killing. That's how I look at like, it. Like I'm talking about he going still, home first round level. to Phoenix. Yeah. Everybody in the league know that Kobe was the best player in the when world. When I say the best, when I look at these dudes, I'm like, this dude is unguardable. That's why anybody on the floor. I think he's the best guy walking on this court right now. I seen that with Mike on every court. And I also seen that with like Hakeem too. Like I was like, I can't, my eyes can't lie. Word. I seen these dudes take over every game I mean, they've been a part of. I'm not, that's I'm why not when, taking away from nobody. Cause it, it was it was a lot of good players. A lot of good players in, in the era. Penny, like I'm like, was a player. all of these dudes. Penny, nice. Grant Hill, like, like you had great players. You like, you know, the dream team was full of great players, but to be amongst the wolves is 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 is, is a leader of the pack. It's oh, somebody who's uno numero. Oh yeah, you like Jordan win his had time. To, Jordan had to work his way up. Yeah. Like when Jordan was doing his thing, Magic, Isaiah, yep. and Larry Bird, they fighting to be the best player yep. that, in the world. Yep. That's that's one of the main reasons that I yep. feel that Kobe is constantly disrespected in this whole but that's goat what I said, and everything. Man. No, oh. I, I, I'm not saying that y'all did it. I'm just saying, period. Yep. That I feel like. Like I, I'm, I, I literally had to guard him, prime, three P, all the Me way too. to whatever you want to say. Like, please, yeah. bruh, it's different, bruh. You hear me? Like, please, what are y'all talking about? It's ridiculous. My top five is is, is MJ, Kobe, easy Kobe, easy number two ever. Exactly. I don't even want to say number two. He's like, he just up here with man, himself. bro. Like, it's not in greatness, but in terms of skill. To man, me. it's yeah. MJ. It's MJ, Kobe, Shaq. Then I'm going LeBron. Then I go Kareem. See, I got. I I, I like to put these dudes in there when they don't. That when they were tired though. Like that's when like I really want. To like I really wouldn't. Like I'm. I I really don't really use Kareem as a measuring stick because he like he said he's in the '70s and pre all of that and like he just greatness. Yeah. I don't want to even yeah. really mess with that. He like one like, to me. He like one of the founding fathers. That's of this that's whole what I'm saying. Like him, so Bill Russell, Russell Kareem, they just like yeah, over there. Bill him, Russell, Bill, they Russell, over there. Like, you don't even mess just, with them. Like you know what I'm saying. Like y'all the, the towers they, of this whole shit. Y'all exactly. build. Y'all help. Y'all help build this whole thing. So it's like it's hard to put them in there. Plus yeah. they big fellas. Like and then that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. that's why I kind of just lead them over there. But like they really positional players. Like dominant just at that position. I'm on the block with it. And I feel like we have to put. I I can't not put Shaq in there because he the baddest dude. To walk this planet, yeah, right. like he the bad, so like that man, too, the man. That's what I'm saying, like man. And he was, and, and, and he seen. he seriously, he oh. seriously, he he transcends any. I don't care what what year, what what era, what oh, he no, gonna he, he gonna everybody. monster <laughs> kill <laughs> everybody. Nobody yeah. in no year, no time was bigger or stronger. They can't deal with uh, it. You had nobody. to just relax while Shaq was. Like you name him, Will 
Daryl Dawkins, none of them. He'll, he'll make all of them look like little no, kids. Yes. Like, for real, he was a monster. He was the first one that big, that big to move that, that easy. Because, you know, all of the other bigs was long and lanky. He, oh, he moved so fast, and he was dunking stuff so easy. I'm Bruh, like, yo, how like, does this dude get to play in the league? Like, Daryl Dawkins shattered glasses. Like, he brought down the whole the foundations whole the, the of the The man. whole court. You hear me? He, yeah, Shaq Josh used to Rick dunk Thunder. on people who, like y'all played against Shaq in the in Trust the prime me. years. Trust so, me, three P. That man Come body on. hurt when they he had was the man. number. They had the so, number one man of steel. And they the, started the, games off doing what? Tossing that three right down there. Player, the the number one and number and two stuff. player in the league <laughs> was on the, the number Lakers. one and yeah. number two players in the league was on the same team when we got to the league. But that's what I'm telling you. You had to chill for a few years. Guarding Kobe, <laughs> like you remember, you remember the scene in Love and Basketball, bro, when when Sanaa Lathan, she defended and it's like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. that's my description every time guarding Kobe. <laughs> like, every, like, bro, the man, like, you, everybody know it was at one point where he literally is the one player in the league he might shoot a left hand, he'll do anything. Yeah, yeah. You can't put nothing past him, he'll Wrong do leg. anything. That's what I'm saying, he was out there like, yeah. I'll try it on you, boy, like yeah. you got, i try something and not even care, like yeah. i try something on yeah. you. And then like, how you out there like, bruh, this dude here. You want some shit. What? Boy, he's he was shit. He, like, please. The four, and they disrespect him constantly. constantly. He was like, just nobody had the mentality that he had. Like, man, that man was like, it's kill everybody all the time. Can't nobody fight me. You say something to me, I'm putting fifty on you. And yeah. I'm not saying it. I'm talking about literally. I'm about to try and put fifty on. <laughs> yes, you. yes. Like, and I'm a talk bad. I'm a man. Please. Oh five, oh six season. Please, I think. man. That man was a. Kill him. I was staying up late, seeing in high school, watching him going to work. I watched that eighty-one point game live, and when he got to cooking and that night, I was like, "This is the greatest. This is the greatest player I ever seen, though." Bro, I really thought that that night. I'm like, man, he's shooting face. He coming into the lane, stopping on the dime, give you two pump fakes, Foul right him. before three seconds. Playing I'm pulling out hard, physical, <laughs> and but trying to get man. Okay, screaming oh, on oh, you okay. after he dunk. Like, oh, okay, you oh, gonna? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's what you. Oh, okay, I'm about to. <laughs> He was screaming, like all the best defenders that I heard of in the league coming up, like before I got into the league, Bruce Bowen, the Shane Battiers, the, the, the Raja Bells. Like he was really going right at them every night and he was really trying to punk them. Like he really tried to show, like they was good defenders. They got paid for playing defense and Kobe yeah. was like, nah. Going crazy. Stop Nobody playing was gonna get me. no name on Nah, you wasn't getting the Kobe stopper name. Ruben Patterson, they try, hey. stop. Game winners on that. No, nah, he like, was cooking them people's man. Yeah. I'm like, he too good in this league because like he was like the rest of the two guys in the league was catching shoot threes or they was great defenders or they couldn't really shoot and they was pick and roll guys. It was like not a complete two guard around at that time. Yeah. Like not real complete like Cole, except that for dude. what T Mac maybe. Yeah, Mac T Mac was, the was close. Thing. He was the closest thing, but he still wasn't. Mac was Kobe next was thing. I mean, he still all won those cold. two guys. Like in that's the what I'm saying. Like he made anybody who even like nah, the next had best, a run and threatened the throne. He he, he was just to me the next the next best two guards. The point. next best two guards was was AI and Ray Allen. Was yeah, the next Mike, two Mike best Red came two. up a little bit after that, right? Yeah, Mike yeah. Red. But the next the next best two guards was at the time was. Mike was AI and, and Ray Allen and T Mac, but T Mac was a small four. Yeah, I looked man. at him more as a three. Well, yeah, he was he was playing small four. T Mac was a killer too. Oh, yeah, AI yeah. couldn't guard Kobe. No. no, I don't think Kobe could guard AI on whole nah. game. Nah. But yeah, they got it's not a real matchup. They wasn't a matchup. Yeah, no. but Kobe used to. Kobe used to want to guard run him. up on it. Yeah, like, he Who was. We can do the better in the nineties now. No, I want to say one more thing, man. I stop no. cutting me off. Let me construct it. Uh, better today or better in the nineties? Hmm. Jerseys. The jerseys in the nineties was better. Jerseys in the nineties was better. Yeah. Technology better today, but the style was better. So back what's in the your 90s. so what's your favorite jersey from the nineties? I know mine off the top. Ah. The old school New Jersey Nets, Drazen Petrovic joints. Mm. The uh, the blue, the light the, blue, the blue with the red yeah, yeah, joints. Yeah, yeah. Them joints was hard. Me. The Suns, I got that's a, just a classic joint. The Suns with the, uh, the, on the side, side with the, okay. Um, 
And the, the Grizzlies, Vancouver Grizzlies joints was fire. Uh, I was just gonna say that Toronto. And, but Toronto had, had the, the best joint one. The first name is out of mind. Yeah. And they had the little rap on the that front. That was the, the first ball. time. That was like the funkiest NBA jersey. Yeah, like yeah. The Toronto Raptors. That was the was one. Hard. That was the one. Word. The purple joint with the stripes. And when uh, Orlando dropped that that black pin <laughs> <laughs> the, the Chicago Bulls pinstripe yeah, still the best yeah. jersey Mike of all time. It was after though, we bit after the after the Magic. Yeah, it was after the Magic, it. but <laughs> that was still stupid hard. All oh right, yeah, that so, was after the Magic. Yeah, yeah. So so better in the '90s or now? Uh, NBA player handshakes. They better now. Yeah, they do everything. They do everything. They backflipping. They they nay nay and all that all types of stuff. Yeah, we I miss Russell and uh Cameron campaign. campaign man. I, they used to rock. They used to get it in. Like, Yo, that <laughs> boy, that, hey, they used in. to do like I used to wonder like, and you knew it couldn't be all rehearsal because they would go off off board and do their own yeah, thing. Man, <laughs> so what just be wild? What uh, better in the nineties or better now? The layup line. Like how they doing the video when everybody jump when he I'm dunks say, and yeah. you know how you like in the ninety days. Whack! I like the I like the regular layup line, man. Get you get ready for the game, man. <laughs> <laughs> All that extra shit, man. So get back to the nineties. Yeah, well, man. You couldn't, it, you couldn't touch the rim, so everybody had to go up there. And uh, could you a quick little get drop a quick in? Little drop in. And run back to half court. Exactly. They run back in the half court right now, yeah, they man. Take if you dunk in the layup line. <laughs> yeah. they now they let them dunk so hard in the layup line. They gonna break the goal before the game starts. Yeah, back then yeah, the nineties was better. I I I, I kind of know the answer to this, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Better in the nineties or now? R and B music. Come on, man. That's always on radio. Was R and B in the nineties coming up? Only was on the radio. Nowadays, they pop up pills, all types of crazy <laughs> stuff. Going on. Even on the R and B songs, you gonna have a feat a rapper feature. Yeah, it's you right. ain't hip hop getting crazy no, right you know now. What Trap about, music. What about rap music? Better now or in the nineties? See, that's the thing I've been thinking about that. Cause <laughs> they more artistic now. They are artists at the end of the day. So they a little bit more artistic with the sound now, but the straight bars back then, rapping about stuff back then, the content so, was so, better. So, so, if you so was, he's a rapper. Yeah. Nah, I ain't yeah. no rapper, but I have rapped before. Yeah, so. I heard the song. I used to listen to the song with you and uh, Stack 5, with Stack Jack, Oh, yeah, yeah. Stack real, he really into it. Yeah, I ain't into really, it like really Stack. Into it. I was in Shout Atlanta when he Jack. was really going in. <laughs> With the rapping stuff really being focused on it. If you're stranded on the island, you ha you needed five albums to uh -oh. get you through it. Come on, uh oh. What is your five albums you need to get through you, through this albums. island? Black album. Okay. Hove. Uh, Confessions from me. From me. Uh, that's your album. Okay, that's a bar. I, I definitely um, gotta pick a Drake album. Drizzy. Uh, got to either Scorpion album. I mean, that's probably his best work to me. The new joint he dropped. So you like that joint? Yeah, it had an R and B album and different vibes on well, there. Was rocking though. So that got that Drake. We got Black gotta Album. Drake. We got Usher's Confession. Scorpion. Yeah. And we yeah. got Drake uh, Scorpion. Yeah. That, that's uh, 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 Midnight Marauders. Um. Um, tribe, you gotta have the tribe vibes on there. Tribe called Quest. Tribe called Quest. Um, that's for after that. Damn, that's a tough question. And then you gotta have um, um, Ready to Die. Ooh, oh. the big. Okay, I, I'm not mad at that yeah. top five. Mm, that's a, that's a solid like that. five albums. <laughs> yeah. But dance moves, better in the 90s, better now. <laughs> They better now. Yeah, it's so much. Yeah, it's so now, much. They done upgraded. They creative and this yeah. I love the electric slide key. still lives oh, today. Look, he, oh, cha 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 cha. Yeah, yeah, right. doing that. Casper cha cha slide. now, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> cha cha again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you right. That's real. I think I like the I like the I like the young kids though. I like to see not like the real young kids, the little little kids. Yeah, little like kids, yeah. it, it'd be like, yo, this is hilarious. Not them right grown now. ups dancing on the ground. Yeah, I right won't there. see that. Yeah, I ain't talking about the big kids. <laughs> yeah, better in the nineties and now. I know this one. In game dunks. Oh yeah, nineties for sure. I mean, Vince Carter was windmilling easy in games. 
getting dunked on left and right. It was a lot of body to body. Yeah, I think I think what made it better. Yeah, it's like what made it better in the nineties though was the was that you got to actually showboat like when Kent like when Sean Kemp cradled that joint and dunked on Chris Gladden and then pointed at him and like like now you get thrown out the game for staring or like you know some like back then you could stare people down like Mike dunk on them and scream and scream and you know like point at them yeah all of that MJ Shaq dunk on what's name push them out of bounds. Nothing happened yeah. and Dully throw the ball at him like. Yeah, that's just hoops. Yeah, like now it's like you can't do anything. You nah. scream, stare for like one second, they like tech, nah, you can't yep. even look at him, but don't look at him like, yeah, so it's like, yeah. you know. Nah, back then they was getting dunked on crazy. Dudes was doing, when Vince went baseline on Chris Mullen, I'm like, why'd you even try that? How you try that in the game? Like, you go baseline on a random drive and you just win, come on. Yeah, Vince Nobody Carter doing is. It. Greatest just, dunker of all time. To see him opinion. now still, still do out it. here doing it. He was about to dunk on Carl Anthony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If he, he was, was no push. Like, he Paul's had seven threes the other night. He had seven threes. Shout out Vince Sanders. Shout 41. Vince Carter, who, who would man. ever think that, 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 man, that we would be talking about him Vince and his Carter legacy like and it wouldn't be about dunking? It's crazy. Like, yeah. it was no way, yeah. right, that his legacy wouldn't hang on dunking. And this man then rewrote everything and he out there, like, it's he sick to me. All kind of records. Yeah. It's crazy. It's sick to me because my first ever basketball jersey. I'm I'm in third grade. Was Vince Carter. Now I'm playing against him. <laughs> <laughs> that's just third grade, and he's still in the league. Yeah, like that's, that's crazy, crazy how long he he been around. That's crazy. Better sixth fo- grade football. Better now or in the nineties? Um, um, in the nineties for sure. I mean, it's safer now though. Yeah, it's safe. It's now. safe for now, but in football they was they they was hitting back then. They was hitting. Steve Atwater, <laughs> Ronnie Lott. They was hitting. Them safeties was really putting the imprint on the game. <laughs> them linebackers was coming around the corner. Man, what? But now them defensive linemen. I seen a defensive lineman run a four four the other day. I'm like, oh, them, these boys get <laughs> these boys growing. The, the DK, what's his name? The Robinson, oh, yeah, yeah. Metcalf, Metcalf, DK Metcalf. He's a physical specimen. He ran like four three. He him? lived like twenty seven times on a two twenty five rack. I'm like, who is this dude? He look, he look like a linebacker. He look crazy. He receiver. He a receiver. He gonna be wreaking havoc out there. That's like the two point oh to. Let's see if he can live up to it. Man, that's a lot to put on him. Celebrations. <laughs> Better oh, yeah. now or better than the nineties? Man, the nineties, man. They, that's where it started, really. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> they had to rain y'all. They had to tone it down with y'all. Now we can't do nothing because y'all done wild out for about 10, 11 years. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they ain't used to like when we did that. Man, boy, what? Some of the coaches, yeah, they ain't used to like what we did. But man, you know, always, you know, what I'm saying, we want to thank you for 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 rocking with us right cool. now. This the you know, Q Rich, D Miles, and Knuckleheads live on location. We at San Francisco, straight across from the Golden Gate Bridge yes, over there, my man. Easy Money, yeah, AKA man. KD, brought yes, us into sir. his space, man. Rocking with us, we definitely appreciate it, man. Much no doubt. love, no doubt, man. Love.